here because coach just bought a coffee and we can't go into the museum with it so we thought we'd walk around i'm not gonna throw out my coffee i spent 228 for this okay <laughs> we'll just walk three miles instead and look at all the monuments in washington dc Stellar defense. Good adjustment from Whitaker doubling up on the same side instead of going left, right, left, right. Spectacular fight. Whitaker knows how to fight on the inside of the southpaw, ties up that left arm. Chavez is staying with him as Whitaker's trying to outmaneuver him. How are you feeling this morning? Feel pretty good. Yeah, my back's stiff from all the driving, but that shouldn't matter. It, it's felt good last night and this morning while I was warming up. And uh, it looks like it's already 87 degrees outside. So it's gonna be a hot one. Um, I always try to remember, it's hot for my opponent too. But being the Vermont boy, I'm not exactly used to this heat. So we'll see how it all goes. I gotta think about uh, Foreman and Frazier fighting in, what was it, 117 degree heat, and they went for 15 rounds. So I can shut up and suffer a little bit for three. Let's go. Nice. Gotta protect this chrome dome. <laughs> Laugh all you want. <laughs> Better? It is hot. I should get out of the sun. Yeah. How you doing, man, Anthony? Dude, you're the man. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. I appreciate it. Appreciate yeah. you, dude. That's as good as it gets. I'm so happy. Yeah. How lucky are we? That's Lil Mac. You've been yes. talking about him for a yeah, minute. Yeah, yeah, I love yeah. Lil Mac. Yeah. He, he's living my dreams. Oh, yeah. He's gone pro. He's fighting BKFC. He's got a bunch of street fighting experience. You know, he's got those those nice strong hands that can carry him in a bare knuckle fight. I'm jealous. I'm I'm like fangirling out a little bit here. <laughs> I get to fight him. How cool is that? Yeah. <laughs> All right, round one started, and we're immediately just feeling him out. Giving him different looks, just like we did with the Mason fight. Throwing up our high guard, hitting the body, 
changing head slots, using those feints, and we're trying to get him to show his hand without us pulling the trigger. We knew our jab was gonna keep us safe because he was shorter than us, so almost everything I did, I tried to finish on the jab. You can see me finding it there when he tries to pressure in. And you can see, because I'm the taller guy here, I can very successfully hide behind that lead shoulder as long as I've got ground at my back to step away. He switched to southpaw, so I switched to southpaw, and we laughed with each other before we both switched back to our A games at Orthodox. I don't want to fight a southpaw if I can help it, so I wanted to disincentivize that early. You can see we found really early that he really, really, really doesn't want to get under that right hand. He always blocks it by bringing his left hand out. And you can see, if I go back, us leveraging this into some offense. You see, we go four touch, four touch, four touch, and then we start sitting on it once I realize that that spot's gonna be there and he's not gonna attack me for throwing it. Once again, just like when we fought Mike Guy, I cannot even begin to tell you how hot it was. I, we didn't even warm up because I started warming up and my legs started seizing up on me. So we knew coming in here, we wanted to push a pace on him and try to tire him out because it's hot for both of us. And we wanted to work the body early. And you can see now that I'm getting more comfortable in front of him, I'm getting comfortable sliding past that cross lane to try to touch that body. Now I know he's got a big, big, big right hand. I've seen him knock out guys 80 pounds bigger than me with that right hand. So once we got more comfortable, we started trying to bait it, where I'm sitting like James Tony folded to my open side, trying to get him to throw that big right hand so we could get under it and attack the body more successfully. I think that we invested, I don't want to say too much in the body, but I think that all of our body work early stopped him from feeling comfortable throwing his right hand. So we messed up the order of operations here and he didn't pull the trigger on the big right that we were trying to bait. Moving into round two. We do less work. Round two comes out. And I'm trying to see the adjustments that he's made and he's jabbing, he's doubling up on the jab. He's trying to parry instead of just hide behind that high guard and use his feet. He wants to try to disincentivize my jab too. You see, he's smart enough to punch at my chest and my shoulders. He's got a lot of experience, he's a talented guy. But I think he let me lead here, which is what let me play my game, hiding behind that left shoulder, parrying those hooks and uppercuts and just think in lane theory. Don't stand in one spot for too long. Stay mobile, stay mobile. We're probing, we're touching that guard. At this point, we've mixed up our power quite a bit. Some of these shots are hard, some of these shots are light, and hopefully we've done our due diligence to get him treating every shot like it could be a hard shot and that's what lets us maintain the pressure and game that we've got. Trying to keep working the body, trying to be careful, blocking off his far side hooks with our shoulders. Again, if you wanna study somebody who I watched the morning of this fight, Lee might have even got it on the tape study. Look at Henry Hank. Henry Hank's a guy I've been really big on lately, and of course, all reliable. I love James Tony. This would be like James Tony versus Triple G, or James Tony versus Julio Cesar Chavez. He's got that nice high guard and that good right hand, which he is just barely missing. And this is one of the reasons why I love fighting with no headgear. My head is smaller, my head is lighter, my visibility is better, and it's easy for me to make those shots miss barely or slide them by me and be in a position to counter. This is a level of smoothness that I have yet to be able to achieve in USA Boxing matches with the headgear. But we're working on it. Moving into the final round here. 
Less work. <laughs> Good. I told him right before this final round because I felt comfortable. I said, I'm going to stand right in front of you this whole round. Let's trade some leather. And you can see he's coming for it right off the bat. Yep. He's throwing punches out of that high guard a little bit better than he was in the first two rounds because he recognizes that we're building some momentum here and he's got to do something to disincentivize me. Trying to keep fainting in the middle distance, trying to keep him guessing, trying to drag those defenses thin so that I can create an opportunity to be able to attack. I'm a sucker when people double up on the rear hand and you saw him touch me with it there. If he found that lead a little bit sooner, this could have been a very, very different fight. Good, we're trying to swim. And we get to a place where we're really trying to bait that right hand. I wanted to put a really nice cherry on top of this performance. And I wanted him to throw that big right hand so I could get under it and attack the body. But he's too smart for me. He's throwing that right hand pretty straight and he's picking his moments really carefully. He's an educated guy. You can hear Lee telling me to stay low, stay low, stay low. And I'm trying not to rise up too tall in that cross lane. But you can see every once in a while we cut it real close. But just like with the Obed fight, ideally we've built enough ambiguity on if I'm gonna be there to be hit that he doesn't want to throw a hard, hard, hard punch because he's afraid he's going to move yes, or I'm going to move. So even if I get tagged, ideally it's with a punch that has very little confidence or conviction on it. In the final stretch here, swimming, moving, trying to stay busy. And that's that. I had a lot of fun. I love street beefs. You've heard how many nice things I always say about their organization. I love that they lower the barrier of entry for athletes to get in there and mix it up. You gotta learn not just to fall in love with the boxing, but you gotta learn to fall in love with the fighting too. They are a 50-50 pairing when you compete. Thanks a lot, guys. Wow, I gotta do this more often. Thanks, guys. There you go. Hey, I'm gonna take it. There it is. Thank you, please do. Wow. Thanks, thanks. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Cool. Thanks, man. Have some water. Yeah. Oh, that was great. We'll get a yeah. picture. Yeah. yeah, I've been doing this for like 20 years. You can too. You can yeah. pretty, pretty composed. Thanks, man. man. Yeah. Doing my best slow yeah, James Tony too. impression. Hey, you know? that's, that's <laughs> nice to meet you, Peace. Good luck today. Kick some ass. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. Appreciate you. Oh, yeah. I can't believe that. That's a one. <laughs> That was great. I felt, um, because I wasn't pushing the pace like last year, and because that flooring's pretty solid, I felt comfortable just kind of hanging with him. Like I said, he fights just like Tristan, um, but he doesn't exit. He's used to guys giving him ground. So if I just stay on him, he's never gonna exit. He's always gonna turn to meet me. So I just hit, hit, step, hit, hit, step, hit, hit, step, and he's gonna be there, you know? Fun. Good fun.